Yeah. Boom. Boom. All right. We're in it. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a treat. Um, listen, I don't even know how to do this intro. I'm just gonna just I'm gonna fly with it. Um the women want to be her, men want to be with her, everyone wants to be like her. Um an elite level power lifter, um, the apple of so many people's eye. Um, I mean, if you don't have your post notifications turned on when she posts, then you're you're missing out. Um <laughs> She's beauty, brains, brawn, um, and she's fun. She's fun, and I um, it's it's a, it's an honor to have her on. Um, I don't even know. I don't even know where to start. I just know that, that you're 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 good people. Uh, we actually, I I don't know. We became recent friends. It's like one of my more recent friends. I actually consider like a, a pretty decent friend. So it's fun. It's kind of fun to to watch from afar. I guess she's prepping for a, a meet coming up soon. So that's that's good stuff. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, she goes by one name, and that's Yesenia. Welcome. Thank you for being on this thing. I think I did pretty good with that intro. I don't care what, yeah, I, I think I did well with that one. Um, so for the people in the world that are listening to this podcast, the the tens to to twenties to hundreds to thousands of people that end up listening to this thing, um, if they're living under a rock, um, uh, I'm gonna give you two minutes to give people an intro to who you are. And your time starts now, go. I'm Ksenia. Yes. I'm from Kiev, Ukraine, but I currently live in the United States. I've been here since August 16th of 2001. So um, coming up on about a long time. <laughs> Uh, spent about 10 of those years in Wyoming, about five in Washington State, and the rest in Texas. And I've been powerlifting for actually four years now. Mm. So that's um that's it. That's the gist. That's the gist. I don't know. I guess that was more like 30 seconds, but no, that's <laughs> the, yeah, that's how we need. That's how we need. I guess we more fun, more time to talk. Um no, the 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 crazy thing is like when I first, I think when I first saw you, um, as far as lifting goes, you were blonde, right? Yes. Yes. So yeah, I did my research. Um, yeah, you were blonde. Um, and uh I don't know, one of my one of my friends, I don't know who it was. I can't honestly, I can't even remember. One of my friends was like, Yeah, she's Ukrainian. I'm like, what? Shut up. Well, my boys is Ukrainian. That's crazy. And then like I found out you're like Kiev and all that stuff. That's that's dope. All right. Okay. This is my question. Um, so is it do we say it Kiev or Kiev? Um technically, I guess if we want to be technical right now with everything going on uh in ukrainian you would say it as cave um i actually don't speak ukrainian i speak russian so i say it as a kiev okay all right see all right all right, all right. So i kind of remember but i kind of don't i you know what i mean like i just remember buzzing nah bro you don't say it like that you don't say it like that but he spoke ukrainian so that's okay 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 see look people we're getting we're getting we're getting cultured as we go um We'll dive into a little bit of that in terms of, of um, you know, all the stuff that's going on right now uh, with that. And I mean, I know you have family and, and friends and stuff that, that are still there that, you know, you, you are constantly seeking like support for them and everything. So I definitely want to make sure we touch on that um, before we wrap this thing up. Um, but uh, we're going to go into your, your lifting journey a little bit. Um, Certainly with this, the way I kind of do this podcast, I mean, obviously, I mean, we talk about lifting a little bit, but I don't like just talking about this, like lifting. It kind of, I mean, no diss to the lifters, love you guys, but I mean, it gets old because we all kind of do the same thing. Like, hey, we pick stuff up, we put it down. And, all right, great. Yay. Let's put a little bit more on. Let's try to pick that up, put it back down. Okay, let's do it again. Um, somehow, we, <laughs> somehow we figure out a way to make it so complicated and make it like such a science um, and make it seem like something more than what it is, which... Come on, man. You lift, lift yourself up, put it down. Like, chill out. I'm not speaking to myself personally, also. Um, but um, 
when when was it that you i guess i don't want to say you picked up your first barbell but when was it that you like started getting into powerlifting like what was what was it that drew you to powerlifting like to start lifting period or powerlifting specifically we'll go we'll go with lifting period we'll introduce you to the i I just weightlifting in general okay so it's a pretty typical story like with most women I wanted to lose weight um and I obviously started out with cardio like most other women did and so I did that Mm -hmm. uh pretty successfully in the beginning and obviously it stalled my progress after a while um I was doing (laughs) I was doing like at home videos at some point um some dvds or some shit like a long long time ago right and they had incorporated some weights and i was like i kind of like this but i want like the real thing and i didn't really know where to start uh i don't really talk about this like a whole lot but um when i lived in washington state and i think i was in my early to mid 20s at the time um I had like, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to start or where to start or anything like that. But I like Google some stuff and I Googled CrossFit. I had obviously like kind of seen it around um, on social media a little bit. And I found like a place that was close by that was literally like walking distance to me. Um, and I signed up for, and I signed up for it. And they required you to do like a month long intro class kind of thing before you like jumped in with everyone else and so I did that for about a month but I was like okay I like this I like the barbell work but I don't really like specifically what they were doing um so once I got done with the month like it kind of gave me sort of a basis to like how to squat like you know how to do a pull-up um like really really basic stuff and so that kind of gave me a little bit more confidence to walk into an actual gym with weights and I after that month I didn't sign up for another month I went to I was going to college so I went to the um just the college gym that was there and I kind of started doing my own thing I guess (laughs) <laughs> um, not very not very well at all like not at all <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing I did the whole like I don't know what these machines are but whatever order that they're sitting in like that's the order that I'm going in <laughs> you know that kind of thing um and I did that for a while and I started meeting other people that were there um we kind of got into it kind of together yeah um and I made some friends along the way and yeah I just kind of learned along the way like I definitely did not learn it the right way I wish that I would have um but I didn't know better like most people just don't know any better you know and that's kind of how it started I think I I think this was back in um 2015 and the first thing Obviously, like I did that for a few months. And the first thing that I was like, okay, well, what's next? I don't, I don't know. Do I do a bodybuilding show? And I was like, okay, let's, let's try it. Um, so I started dieting. Uh, that was the first time that I had signed on with RP strength. That was back in, uh, 2016, like I think like January 1st of 2016 and I had a really successful cut for about 11 weeks and I dropped I think like I don't know like 20 some pounds um I did really well but there were some family issues that were going on so I didn't end up actually competing um and due to those family issues I ended up coming to Texas and so once I came here I did end up doing a full bodybuilding prep and I competed in my first bodybuilding show in 2017 uh, in June of 2017 um and it was after that that I didn't really know what I wanted to do I just knew that bodybuilding wasn't really for me it was kind of an underwhelming experience and the gym that I attended was heavy metal like that was the first gym that I came to when I moved to Texas and that's the gym that I still train at to this day and um like it's very strength focused and the owners were always 
trying to convince me to do like a strength sport and yeah. finally like once I wasn't committed to bodybuilding they were like you need to try this like you need to try this and so I deadlifted for the first time and I deadlifted like I think 245 for three reps or something and um with my like tennis shoes on and all this kind of stuff, you know, <laughs> and, um, I went to a couple powerlifting meets and I went to, uh, a Queens of Iron that USBA holds every single year. Uh, and that was the first meet where I was like, okay, I actually kind of want to try this. And one of my friends at the time who's like one of my best friends now said hey well if you sign up for one like I'll do it with you oh, because I I was I was so chicken shit like I didn't know I didn't know right. anything about anything like I didn't know anything about the training or what it takes or anything like that and I was like I don't even know how we get started like who can prepare me like what do I do and she was like just sign up for one I'll do it with you and we'll figure it out and I was like okay and I signed up for one 13 weeks out I competed for my first time in June of 2018 and I haven't looked back since that's awesome so it's like it's almost like it found you that's that, yeah you know like <laughs> that's I mean and the thing is like you obviously I mean you're you you're still hitting those newbie gains and I mean I mean from what I've seen and again it's not a knock but like the technique seems to keep getting better and better and better you're getting stronger you're hitting PRs and stuff and I don't know I mean just in the a little time that we've talked, it seems like you're like really excited about this one coming up. So that's 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 dope. That's dope. It's always good to like see somebody excited about going into a meet. Um, so I guess oh, this is I don't know. I mean, so let's rewind a little bit. Um, and again, you know, um, I don't know. I I, I want, I guess, that people like to to not just know you as a lifter, but like I guess know you complete as a person. Um, so. What was it like? What was it like growing up in the Ukraine? Um, so that's a question I've gotten a lot over yeah. the years. Mm -hmm. uh, my dog's getting the blinds, but um, the best way, I, the best answer I can give you is different. Like it's yeah. very different. If you've ever traveled to another country, like I would mostly say a whole another continent, mm -hmm. um, then you can kind of get an idea of just how different it is. There isn't like a particular way that I can best describe it. Just everything about it was completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, the culture, um, obviously the language that we speak, then um, like literally everything. Like we yeah. didn't have, we didn't have like, houses we had apartment buildings you know like we had yeah. little neighborhoods that was just an apartment like a whole apartment buildings there's yeah. like hundreds of them in one right. and that's our little community and um we walk everywhere yep um public transportation i guess too but uh cars weren't really much of a thing like if you had a car you were kind of fancy <laughs> um i also grew up with my parents who divorced very early on. I was very little, so I don't really remember that, but we continue to all live together. Right. Um, and we all, and I have, and I have an older sister too. So all four of us actually lived in a single bedroom apartment. And when I say like a single bedroom apartment, that doesn't include a living room. Like it's a kitchen and a hallway that goes to a room and that's, that's where I grew up until we moved here yeah. and just kind of giving you like the description of that kind of you can kind of guess why we left right you know um so it was definitely very different um no, no similarities between the two countries honestly like nothing is similar whatsoever I can't even you can ask me more specific questions and i can answer those but <laughs> See, this like... Is like, like <laughs> the, the one thing i remember i've i've, I've been uh to give actually a, um three times uh in my lifetime and for some reason the main thing i remember and it's so weird me saying it but the thing that i remember the most is i always got the airports confused don't ask me why but I always got, because there's like, there's two airports there. <laughs> there's a one and a two. And I always, 
somehow ended up flying into one like I, I think they like they labeled like give one and i was i always had to go across town to the other airport to fly out i've done that three times i don't know how i don't know why my trips have always been that way i think it's because i, I book them that way i don't know but I, that's like my biggest thing that i remember is like I, I always got confused um and i don't know maybe because i'm black i have no clue but I always got the funniest Uber drivers. And it's weird because like, I don't, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I, I grew up with a, I grew up with a guy who's Ukrainian man. And so he was, uh, you know, I think he was funny, dude. You know what I mean? But like, he's funny in his own way. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't like, he wasn't funny, like stupid, funny, like me. He was like a straight, straight up, like, all right, this is the joke. If you don't like it, then you don't like it. I don't care if you don't like it. But I always thought that was the funniest thing because we had such different forms of humor <laughs> shout out Adrian I love you bro um we had such different like different like styles of humor but I don't know why but I just thought he was the funniest dude that walked the planet but I I always remember like every time I got an uber or I got a taxi that I would get the funniest freaking people um and I mean I think I think the most embarrassing part was that I obviously I didn't speak Ukrainian nor did I speak Russian I understood it a little bit enough to know like all right I'm not getting jerked here, but they knew English a lot better than I, you know, obviously than, than I knew uh, Ukrainian or or, um, or Russian, but they would tell jokes or they would ask me where I was from. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm from Texas. Oh, Texas, like the Dallas Cowboys. I'm like, yeah, like the Dallas Cowboys. You know what I mean? I just thought that was the coolest thing. Um, but again, I mean, I I, I think you, you pointed out a, a, a real good, um, I guess a good point that, I mean, if you haven't been, you know, to another continent, um, especially Eastern Europe, um like it, it's hard to really explain like just the difference i mean there's like some drastic differences in terms of just how people just relate to one another um obviously cultural differences um you know just the sense of community is a way different way way different um and i think like i you know the i don't know man it's just it's it's just really it's really uncommon to 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 see as much division uh amongst you know say community there versus here we have a lot of division here versus versus there it doesn't seem like there's that much division i mean there is don't get me wrong there's division but i mean we just seem like we have so many different factions of just people just no 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 yes 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 no 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 like no we're here we're here we're here we're here um that was one of the things at least for me the differences that that that, that, that i saw um you know and then of course when, when you know when i hung out with adrian and his family it was just so so nice and it was like if if Either they like you or they don't. There's no in between, and I can always appreciate that. Um, and it's weird because <laughs> I can definitely say that about you. Like, you're one of those if either you like a person or you don't. There's no in between. That's I think that was one of the the cool things from the the people that I that I that I met that knew you. Because I guess it's so weird to say I knew of you before I knew you, but <laughs> I knew of you before I knew you. And I mean that's one of the 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 cool qualities that I've heard. That you'll hear over and over and over it's like yeah Cindy is one of those if if she likes you you're not you're gonna know if she doesn't you're gonna know um and and that's cool you know what I mean like it, it is what it is I mean but I think that's been one of the things as far as like one of the the the, the common characteristics of that I guess people like identifying you is that you're very straightforward um you don't beat around the bush um very goal-oriented and I mean you you're, you're very accomplished in all the stuff that you do um one of those, of course, is, um, I mean, of course, the people that follow you there, you know, like, like you are, you're jacked and you're diced. Um, and like, obviously you have like tons of clients and stuff like that. Um, what got you to that point where I guess, you know, like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at what I'm doing, at least for myself, you know, I'd like to start helping other people. Cause certainly it starts, it gets to that point where you're like, you know what, I think I can help other people, you know, accomplish their goals. Like, was there like a point, you know, in your your lifting slash nutrition career where you're like, you know what, I want to start helping other people. Oof. Um, yes and no, yeah. because I don't, I don't know that I've ever truly reached the point where I'm like, I'm, I'm not like, I know it all. Like, I mean, I'll never think like I know it all, right? you know, but I have, I don't think I'll ever reach the point where 
I feel like I know enough. Right. So it took a long time for me to just kind of bite the bullet and realize that if I keep waiting until I'm ready, like I'll probably wait until the rest of my life. Absolutely. So I just kind of had to, just kind of had to do it and see what happened and see if I would be any good at it because right. just because, because I don't believe that just because you can do it for yourself and you can be good at it for yourself Absolutely. doesn't mean that that will translate to being able to do it for others. Right. And a lot of it I find is not necessarily the knowledge that you need with dieting itself. It's also knowing how to coach so it's like interpersonal skills and being able to get your point across um in the best way so those two kind of go hand in hand like you can be super knowledgeable but if you can't coach it then what like what are you doing right yeah there definitely has to be there has to be a uh, there has to be a good combination of eq and iq that goes on i mean because i mean obviously you to be able to have the knowledge that's that's an awesome that's an awesome you know I guess quality to have, but then to be able to convey that knowledge, to be able to convey it in a way that you know it's understandable to other people, and <laughs> they can <laughs> not only understand what you're saying, but they can implement what you're saying in a way that like it's going to be effective for them. Um, those are literally two different roads that, that that mean that you know that diverge at some point. Um, so to be able to master it, I think that's that's one thing. Like to be able to coach, man, coaching is such a it's a skill that you have to cultivate like over time, you know, yes. and you know, it, it's one of those things that you almost have to be outside of yourself. And the hardest part, and, and, and maybe you run into this is, you know, not taking, it's hard not to take what you do personal. It's just, it's, it's, it's part of you, but you know, to not take it so personal when, you know, things don't work the way you want them to work um, and being able to go back, like take a t- couple sets back on. Okay that that i did did not necessarily work for them so let's go back and find you know let's go find you know what variable it was that that may have led to them not getting the the progress that we wanted to get from um for me that's always been the hardest part you know i don't know if that's something that that you deal with sometimes like you know i i I, i'm my i can honestly I'm, i'm my worst critic a lot of times especially with my coaching because i want not necessarily things to be perfect but i want people to have as close to a perfect outcome as possible with with the programming that's given with the dieting that's given, with the numbers that are given. Um, and so when they don't attain those goals that I, that, I, that I feel like, you know what, I had them set up for the right thing. I, I take it very personal. Like, you know, I failed them in some way. Um, you ever run into that where you're like, you know what, these, you know, these men or women aren't necessarily getting the, the result that, that we had planned for them to get. Um, like I need to go back and change something or is it just one of those things like you just bat a thousand every time, like you just hit it out of the park every time. Uh, definitely not every time. (laughs) Um, I think there are just so many variables at play that you can't, like, it's not a one size fits all. So you just, you never, you, you can ask all the questions Mm -hmm. about where they're coming from, but at the end of the day, like you don't really know, and you're not going to know until you try something and see if it works. Right. And if it doesn't work, okay, well, let's try something else. But either way, like, it's always a learning experience. And even when, I mean, I'm sure you've, you've done this too, like, you've believed one thing to be the, like, the thing, right? And then you learn that there's more evidence that comes out like more research or whatever and so you kind of have to adjust and like change your mind and realize that like okay well I was wrong but Mm -hmm. not like take it to heart because that was what you knew best at the time exactly I mean yeah you the the hard part with with dieting with with programming with lifting with, with fitness in general especially when you lean more toward the, the the scientific outcome of everything is that you base a lot of off the research and data that's given you know what i mean because at the end of the day those x's and o's those one those one through nines that, that they put down um you know it's based off of you know millions and millions and millions of samples 
you know, that are going to lead to the best result, you know, for people in general. So that's what you base a majority of your programming, your research off of is basically you base it off of research that's, that's the current research. Um, and of course, this is an ever evolving, ever living industry is in terms of numbers in general. Um, and there's always different methods. There's always different people. There's always new things that come about that lead to, you know, sometimes better results, sometimes worse results, whatever. But, you know, I think one thing that you pointed out was, I guess, as a, as a coach, you try to, you know, you don't think you know everything. You don't claim to know everything. You don't think you're a, a know-it-all. So that always leads one to want to educate themselves more and stay current with, with all the, the current methods and the, and the current data that's out there. Um, on that note, of course, things have to change, you know, because I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, let's, I mean, let's be honest. Like, I mean, if you, you know, like, hey, I'm going to do a vertical diet. Oh, oh okay. Right, I'm going to do a carnivore diet. Oh, oh, okay. I don't know if that's going to work for you. Like, Hey, you know, I heard if I just, if I just drink lemon and I just ingest, you know, this much and that much, and I just do a cleanse every other month, that's going to let me lo lose weight. Oh, okay. No, that's no, that's not scientifically. This is what you should do. Based off of your body type, this is what you do. Based off of your, you know, I mean, there's there's so many elements that go into, I mean, this diets in general. Um, this is a question I do have for you though. Um, what <laughs> I'm always interested in knowing what's what's the um what's one of the like I guess the diet killers that people just tend to like let slip through the cracks and then you're like, I don't know why I'm not getting the results that I'm getting. If I if I'm understanding your question correctly, then I would say lack of patience. Because mm. it's one of those things they want. Eesh. Yeah, that definitely want happens. they want results and they want them now. And especially if they're coming from a more complicated background, like any sort of disordered eating, it's going to be a lot more complicated. Right. Uh, it's going to take. It may not even necessarily be complicated. It just might take longer. Right. I mean, you can sit here and slash calories all you want until you lose the amount of weight that you want to lose. But at the end of the day, like you're going to end up where you started. Right. You that's not sustainable. No. So, so it's like getting them, it's like getting to that point, but making it like in a sustainable manner, a healthy and sustainable manner. Exactly. The problem is not the losing weight that people have it's being able to maintain it Ooh. so it's the lifestyle changes and be able to fix that and be able to maintain those changes right so that's where <laughs> so that's where the whole idea of because of, you you have to take off the that's so weird because you literally have to take off the hat of coach but then you start becoming like almost like a a lifestyle coach you know like you're not just coaching nutrition now i'm coaching you on a lifestyle like all right so not only am i going to get you to this point but now i'm going to show you how to maintain you know this this weight at a you know at a you know in a healthy manner so that you're not doing this crash diet and 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 you know basically just you know beating your body up like over and over and over i mean that's one thing that you know my my nutrition coach you know shout out eric helms um over and over and over, like had to like bang in my brain is like, all right, you know what? If you want to gain weight, then this is how we're gonna have to gain weight. We got to gain weight in a healthy way. I didn't know there was a such thing as gaining weight in a healthy way. I mean, I, I played football my whole life, so I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna just slam as much food as I can, try to gain this weight and get there. But you know, there's a, a healthy way to gain weight. Awesome. Losing weight, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just gonna go outside and run. I'm just gonna run and run and run and run and run and run and run, and then I should get there because again back in the day that's what how people just lost weight that was just all right i'll just do it this way then you come to find out wait a minute if i actually just you know pay attention to my nutrition a lot better i can lose this weight damn near don't have to run at all um and you know i can you know do some light cardio here and there i can still do it in a healthy manner and i can maintain it because actually i know what my macros are and all that stuff um but again that comes with like kind of like you said you know having a coach that you know, knows the type of personality that you have. I mean, I'm an all or nothing type person. Um, if I don't have a coach that knows my type of personality, then, then obviously I'll lose that weight easy. But will I be able to keep it off? Hell no. It's coming back. You know what I mean, I'm going to keep that coach in business. <laughs> I'm going to keep having to lose weight over and over and over. Um, is, is, that, is that something that you, I guess, and again, I, I'm trying not to beat around, the, like, you know, beat, beat a dead horse over and over and over, but is that something that you try to, you know, make sure that, 
that you explain to your people is like, all right, you know, my, you know, I'm going to try to get you to this point, but we're also going to try to maintain, like, what's the kind of dialogue that you have with them? I mean, because I'm sure you run into some people that are very impatient, um, that want those results immediately. Um, they see you, they see how you look like, I want to look like that, but not realizing, hey, this took time to get to this point. Like, what, what's up? I mean, I'm sure you've had some crazy conversations, but what, what's something that you would have to tell, like, say me, what was something that you would have to tell me, like, you know, to get me that kind of like chill out, like, nah, dude, we're not going to get there this quick. Uh, I mean, depending on the biggest concern of the person, you know, because it's easy to come to a coach and be like, Hey, I want to lose this much weight, blah, blah, blah. in this time period. Um, and that coach is going to just slash your calories and they're going to get you results right. that you're looking for. Um, but at the cost of what? Mm. Like, are you going to be miserable the whole time? And if you're a strength or physique athlete, like, is that going to come at a cost of your strength or yeah. your lean tissue? Um, anyone, like, anyone can really get your results if they cut your calories low enough. So that's something that I don't do. I don't start any of my, any of my clients in what, in a big deficit. Like I start everyone at what I believe would be approximately their baseline. Um, And for some that ends up being right on the dot for some that ends up being a little too much and for some that ends up being not enough um but the idea is to start as high as possible because you have something to subtract from right because you don't know what their starting point is so you have to find that so once you find that you know where to go from there and so that's normally everyone's biggest struggle is that they start the diet and they think that they should be losing all the weight now. Well, maybe you've yo-yo dieted for so long that like your baseline is so low right now that maybe you do need to spend a little more time eating more adequately and it's going to take a little bit longer to see results. Um, And sometimes it's not even about what you see on the scale. So I do ask for more measurable ways like you know pictures I ask for pictures and I ask for measurements right so for everything because you can recomposition like if you haven't been eating well or correctly or adequately for a very long time you can recomp pretty quickly on a lot of food without being miserable right and the scale doesn't show that but then you're going to take a picture like a month or two down the road and you're going to be like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I mean, like, yeah. it's the, so you just, most people just need to be patient. Right. Like, like there's, there's a method, you know, it's not like, all right, let me give you 1200 calories so you can see your results and then you're going to get your results and then you're going to be on your merry way. But right. like a month from now, you're going to be back to where you were. Absolutely. Yeah, like I think that lack of patience is that's that's like that's a definitely a diet killer because people just don't, you know, I mean, along with like obviously, you know, miscalculation of macros, leaving a lot of stuff out in their macros, you know, not necessarily, you know, I mean, tracking like properly in a lot of a lot of senses. Like I think patience is one that I mean, it's just it's literally the one. I mean, because I don't think I don't think anyone's ever at a point where like, you know what, I'm willing to wait a few months. Like everyone wants it immediately, especially around here. I mean, if you're, you know, we, we live in a day and age where like everything's like instant, instant gratification. So if, if I'm not seeing it in a week, if I'm not seeing it in two weeks, like I don't understand, like why is, why is the scale, like why is the scale going up? Well, the, the scale might be going up, but your waist is getting smaller. Like, hey, the scale might, you know, right. the scale might not be dropping as much as you want it to, but you know what I mean? Like your legs look 100% better than they looked last month. You know, like you, your body looks better, you know, you're more healthy you know, you have more energy, you know, like I just, it's, there's so many variables that go into like just a healthy diet, a healthy person in general. Um, and that's hard. I, I can, I cannot say when I, when I, when I had nutrition clients, man, that was work, work. Don't get me wrong. Programming for strength athletes. That's it's work, but not like nutrition, bro. 
nutrition is perfect. Yeah. yeah, like I even have a nutrition coach because I can get neurotic too. So I need that. I know what I'm doing diet wise. I just need someone to like put me back in my place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially like I mean because like you're you're one of the few that are you. I mean you you're you're able to kind of do it both. Like with me, I. I know that I have to do one or the other. I'm not very good at being able to like just hone in on my diet and, you know, streamline and pinpoint for me. I have to do one or the other. Um, like I just, I've tried and I, I, I just, I felt miserable. Like I something always slips through the cracks. So, I mean, it's like no, no my limitations. But all right, cool. Well, I know for this quarter, I'm going to focus solely on the diet. I'm going to pretty much cruise control with my training to make sure that I don't necessarily lose strength but rather just everything's, you know, my, my, my diet's complimentary to just the, the, the main maintenance of strength with a little bit of loss in the, you know, in the, in the process, where then as I get closer to a meal, I'm like, all right, I gotta be eating cause, cause I just, I'll mess up. I just know me, you know? So it's like knowing, knowing the type of person you are, but again, you know, that's, that's, I guess a good way to segue into the, the whole idea of, a, of coaching, but having a coach, um, you run into a lot of people that don't necessarily have that, where it's like, all right, I coach people, therefore I'm going to coach myself. You know, I have clients, therefore I'll be my own client. Um, some people can be successful at it. I'm not one of those people. Um, I like having, like you said, somebody to kind of keep me in check, somebody to kind of reel me back in um, because I, I can, I tend to kind of go to an extreme. Um, so to have somebody, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, even I, when you know better, you're like. Know better and you, yeah, you know, it's just, I think that's been, that's like, I think that's been one of the the, the cool things I, I've, I've noticed in watching a lot of, of elite level athletes like yourself um, is that they're starting to be more and more of a trend of really good athletes having really good coaches, you know, um, regardless if they, them having clients, clientele or not. Um, there's, I guess, I guess, I guess my question would be, was there a point where you're like, all right, I need somebody to hold me accountable because I'm just, I'm going crazy with it all. Um. Not so much with accountability. Mm -hmm. I would say for me, it's mostly been like, I have an idea right. of, you know, when I might be able to compete or how long like my off season will be like, um, and then assessing like where my body weight is at the time. Right. And so I, plan everything out in advance so like I know when I'm going to cut I know when I'm going to maintain I know when I'm going to put on weight um which phases of my training that best aligns with and where I want to see my body weight at right. um and then I kind of communicate that with my coach right. and tell him like okay this is I think this is what I need. What do you think? We kind of come to a conclusion and then I just let him take over. Like, right. that's just one thing I don't have to think about. Like, Absolutely. I just, I just eat. I just do the eating. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that takes a lot of stress off of me because then I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to like assess my progress. I have someone right. else take care of that for me and I can just focus on the training and the eating Absolutely. and my own work. And that way I don't, I don't go, I don't go crazy. I don't go neurotic. Mm -hmm. Like I don't stress too much about it because I know that someone else is handling it for me. So what's your favorite part of the year then? I mean, during, during the season is, is the weight gain, like, like, you know what I get to eat, eat or like, or like, I don't know, like I was, my favorite part, no lie is it's oh god it sounds so bad saying it it's the two weeks before i know i'm about to start dieting and i'm like i'm <laughs> about to go crazy and i and i and this is the thing i never do i just the idea that like you know what it's uh i gotta diet in two weeks so i'm going to enjoy all the food i can and i end up thinking like man do i really want to make it that hard on myself once i start so then i end up i, I have good foods but i never like really have like a lot of good foods i just have like a few good foods here and there and you know like, that's my favorite part so what would be like your favorite like your favorite part of the steps mm. honestly it has been a long time since i have been able to um purposely 
put on weight because it, the last, mm, I would say the last year, yeah. I've actually been trying to stay in my weight class yeah. because I'm, I'm kind of at the point where I'm outgrowing it. So yeah. this is the same weight class that I started competing in four years ago. Yeah. And so at this point, like I, you know, my first few powerlifting meets, I just walked in as is like, that was not a problem for right. me. I was, you know, a couple pounds under my weight class. Like I, you know, trained there and I was able to diet down and then mass back up and then like do all of that. Yeah. Uh, but now, like, honestly, now it's just been, trying to stay within my weight class yeah. and I have been considering like I don't know like is this <laughs> is this my time because I've been struggling dieting down and keeping my weight down yeah. um like I don't know is it time to move up so that maybe I can finally like eat adequately yeah. uh, and not spend so much time dieting like I don't think I even realized that I have been dieting pretty much nonstop for about a year, trying to maintain my weight class. Um, and That's I'll just wild. do like, I'll do like a cut phase and then I'll maintain and then I'll cut again and I'll maintain and I'll cut again. Um, but each time, like I'm, you know, I sit, I sit like in the one seventies now and I'm fairly lean. Like I'm not like anything super crazy, I would say, but for, for me to walk around like this and like still feel strong, um, it's, it's getting to be a little hard because right. this is not my body's set point right. of body fat. Like I've always been, I've always been bigger. Right. Um, right. So to try and change that is definitely a struggle. So, so like maybe do I know. And possibly go up the next meet. Like, I mean, do you, I mean, because obviously, I mean, obviously the more you train, the more mass you're going to build, right? Um, the strength right. Fitting. So it's like, it's so much hard, obviously. Um, it's so much harder to try to, I mean, you're speaking to the choir because I mean, I, whew, man, dude, it's, I keep thinking about going back down to my old weight class. I'm like, geez. I mean, but I, I mean, I got, I have far more fat on me than you for sure. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to be that hard, but it's just the fact that I know how long, I mean, you know how that long that road is like, dude, that's 30 pounds, bro. I mean, and regardless of how, <laughs> how much fat one has, I'm like, I, that's just 30 pounds, you know, and trying to find where in time I'm going to do this in the most healthy way possible without zapping strength. To try to the, the main is the strength. I mean, obviously, strength athletes is obviously that's that's key. That's the goal. Um, it's just, I mean, I'm I think honestly, low key, I'm in it. I mean, I'm in it for the recomposition because I'm just tired of looking like a milk dud. But I really, <laughs> I really <laughs> but I really, you know, I mean, it's one thing that you know, I I I like to don't get me wrong, I love playing the part of strong, but I want to look the part as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, I it's just great. I have so many clothes in the closet that don't even fit anymore. I'm like, all right, well, it's cool. I lasted and, you know, look, or they'll fit the legs, but they won't fit the waist. I'm like, damn, I've never had that problem. Oh man. It's a struggle bus. Like I don't, I just wear gym clothes at this point. Well, that's all and I own. That's all I own at this point. Yeah. So I like, mean, I, I, yeah, I still weigh about the same, um, uh, but definitely like things just don't fit the same. And mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess they shouldn't. I mean, you put this kind of work in, you're moving the weight that you're moving. Like, I mean, you know, your 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 leg masses, I mean, obviously that's gonna grow, you know. What I mean, glutes gonna grow, like, you know, shoulders gonna grow, like latch traps, everything grows. I mean, obviously the more weight that, you know, the the more time and attention one has. So it's like, all right, well, okay, I guess some those favorite pair of jeans are not gonna be favorite anymore. I literally have two of my favorite pair of jeans that are still in the closet. And I just look at them like, I'm never gonna get back in them. I know this. My legs don't fit oh in it. I know oh that, but I don't. Have, <laughs> I don't have the heart to let them go. Uh, that was literally me just telling one of my friends today how I need to go through my closet and just purge, Perfect. like get that's rid cool. of things that don't fit. But that means I have to like try things on, and you know that's like yeah. it's kind of a pain. So mm -hmm. I've been putting it off, but I know like most of that stuff. Like I'm never gonna wear like not because I don't want to, but because I literally can't. You can't fit in it anymore, and it's like, man, 
there's there's stuff in the closet that's brand new tax on it i've never even touched i'm like you know what i'm gonna wear that when this happens that happens well i didn't take an account that like you know what dude i'm literally 20 pounds heavier than i was when i bought it damn it okay so i'm not gonna be fit in that so i'm like all right well cool so i did i had a diet <laughs> i dieted down like last year and so i was like you know i'm gonna put i'm gonna put these pants on yo i couldn't even get them like past my knees i'm like there's no way my legs got that much bigger but they did and so i'm like all right well cool so i guess you know i was like well i guess we put them on ebay or take them to goodwill i don't know <laughs> but it's like it's one of those things where you know i mean the part I love about the sport is like, I mean, I love that you, your body gets bigger and, you know, you, you, you get more jacked. I mean, if you can manage to put on lean mass and, and not, you know, as much fat, like you literally can look like, you know, you, you can look like the part that you play as far as like, you know, moving a lot of weight. So I'm like, all right, one day, this is my, this is my justification for not throwing the stuff away. You ready for this? Well, I mean, one day I'm not going to be lifting that much anymore. And I mean, it's not like I'm going to keep this mask on. So, I mean, I may as well just keep them. That's what I've been telling myself. But that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Like, I, I don't think, I just, I got to get rid of them. So, yeah, I don't know. If you purge, I'll purge. Um, Let's do it. <laughs> I'll do it when you do it. Let's you do it. Know, yeah. Okay, I'll ask, I will ask you a question because, like, I, I this is something, like, honestly, I thought about asking. Honestly, I thought about asking this when we were in Corpus, but I don't know, I don't think I knew you well enough to ask because I was like, this is such a dumb question. Um. <laughs> It's, it's dumb. Let's hear it. It's dumb. It's, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you've heard it before. So when you got to the States, did you already speak English? Did you already knew you already knew English and everything? Or was that like you had to learn it or relearn, I should say? Um, I did know a little bit. So English is kind of a universal language, like everyone all over the world at least knows a little bit. Right. Uh, so the schools teach it from first grade. So oh, okay. I started learning. I would I had uh, we had block scheduling, so we had, I think, like, I could be wrong, but I think if I remember correctly, like, so it was eight classes each day, and so 16 total different classes, and yeah. so we had, uh, from grade one, we had English, Russian, and Ukrainian, and then once we reached, um, we skipped, skipped grade four if you were, like, in a fancier school and you were smart enough to, right. which, thank you, mom, I skipped fourth grade, oh, <laughs> um, so I went to fifth and in fifth grade they added on more languages like I started learning German right. um, and I think there was like French and stuff but English is one of the main languages that we began to learn how to speak but it was British English obviously because we we're closer to right. United Kingdom um, so but learning it as a child is also very different than being immersed in it Absolutely. And so another thing that really helped me is um, in my mom's pursuit of finding a better life for her kids. Um, we did spend about six months in South Africa um, uh. when I in 98. So I was eight years old at the time. So I was very little. Um, and that exposed me a lot to the English language. Yeah. And so I learned how to like talk to other kids and um, it's hard to like actually understand it when you're being spoken to in the accent, like the actual language itself. Yeah. So I kind of picked that up a little bit more. Uh, but when I came here, we obviously like we didn't stay there. We were there for six months and uh, we ended up going back to Ukraine for about three years before we moved to the States. Um, so I knew like a little bit of English, but like I said, like, it's very different being immersed in it. Right. So like, I would still be able to pick up like a word here and there. Um, but between not really knowing how to speak it, fully understand it. And I was also incredibly shy and very introverted. Like, right. I think I spent my entire sixth grade my the first year that I went to school here like I didn't say a word like we had popcorn reading and all the teachers knew like not to pick me um but also like I moved here August 16th and I started school on August 28th damn so they just kind of like here you go fun. <laughs> so, um so like I knew like a little bit but thankfully like I had really good teachers that were really understanding and just kind of let me sit back and didn't force me to yeah. 
participate if I didn't feel comfortable. And so I was able to learn a little bit more um, just through observation. Uh -oh, really? And then I kind of picked up just over time. Oh, now the questions are coming. I'm ready to rock. Okay, so <laughs> when you got here, I'm ready, dude. I've been, I've been waiting for us to get to this point. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> what was the first, like, I guess before you got here, when you found out you guys were coming to the States, right? What was the first thing you wanted to do when you got here? Do you remember? No, honestly, I was like, I was kind of excited. Um, I, it kind of felt like a lot was promised for me when I got here. Right. Um, because my mom met someone and got married and right. that's how we made it here. Right. Uh, but he ended up not being a very good person so like all those promises like went out the window so um we ended up on our own like very quickly so i don't know i don't really i was excited for something different right and like to have things that i didn't have before right I'm like like i like just access to different foods or like yeah. just food in general like even even mcdonald's was like mind-blowing like <laughs> that's what's up that's <laughs> okay um, all right so can, uh, what about this here's a legit question and this is i'm saying legit because i'm thinking enough um what was the first okay <laughs> what was the first thing you it's hard to even like label it because it's gonna sound so dumb me saying it but like what was the first thing you you did when you got to the states, like this is this is this is a this is super American. This is something that America would do. Like I'm sure there was something that you did. Like wait, this is definitely something that they, they only would do in America. Was there something that you did that you can remember? I mean, that you're like, yeah, this is definitely not something that we would do at home. Oof. Um, well, my entire environment was very different because I moved from the city and we moved to. Sheridan, Wyoming. Ooh. So that was shocking enough as it is. And we kind of lived, <laughs> we lived like on the outskirts of the town. It was like middle of nowhere. Like the whole, the whole um, <laughs> town had like 13,000 people in it and like yeah. nothing around it. So like, we didn't have like a big city or anything like right. an hour away or anything like that. That wasn't a thing. We were just surrounded by mountains and, you know, um, so anyway, so I kind of lived on the outskirts of town and it was kind of like on a farm and there were horses. So that was amazing to oh. me. We had, yeah, we had horses. So that was amazing. And we had a dog. It was like, she was already there. Like I was super excited about this dog. Um, what else? The fact that like you needed a car to get everywhere. Yeah. Like we couldn't just walk places, but I got a bike, so I would I would just bike everywhere. Um, and honestly, like I said, like the access to the food was very different yeah. because in Ukraine, unless you're like rich or something, McDonald's was like a what's the right word a luxury almost. a luxury yeah. yeah yeah like i i think i i think i spent like a birthday party there for a friend one time and it was like the fanciest thing like i can still remember the smell of mcdonald's like i don't think i will ever forget it that's how fancy it was to me <laughs> like awesome. we never went out to eat anywhere um i think the i think the only memory i have of going out to eat somewhere in ukraine was um when my mom's husband not husband at the time but when he came to visit us um he took us out to like I think it was like a pizza restaurant or something like that. And that was my first and only experience going out in Ukraine to eat until I came back to visit. That's crazy. So that wasn't even a thing. So like coming here and having that was 
Like, this is my home alone. <laughs> so, like, I mean, obviously, like, you saw family there and everything, man. Um, Like, are you? you know and i know that you you you've uh you like have a constant effort in terms of like you know um helping out and, and spreading awareness of, of all that's going on with the war with uh russia and ukraine um have you like obviously i mean i don't necessarily i mean i'm not i don't want to be insensitive and ask like how is it like that like it's crazy to ask that question but i mean um obviously number one is everyone safe uh, for, I mean, for right now, like my the family that I do have there right now is yes. Awesome, awesome, and I mean, and like just and again, I don't. Oh God, dude, this is like because <laughs> I'm like, hey, in these questions, make sure I don't ask anything stupid. Um, like I mean, when 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 all that, I guess as all that's going down, I mean, you're like, I don't want to like not necessarily how does it make you feel, but I mean, where you know. I, I can't even imagine what that feels like, you know, but I mean, like, it, you know, when we first found out all this stuff was going on and, 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 you know, and obviously, you know, obviously having family, being from there, having family there still, um, I guess what was, I guess, what was, I guess, one of your biggest concerns, obviously knowing that, you know, you want to make sure everyone's safe and everything, um, like what was one of your biggest concerns with all of this going down? hard hitting questions man I'm telling you i'm like i'm like Barbara um, here. i don't know can you elaborate on that my biggest like, concern like, i mean like obviously i mean everyone has concerns in terms of like you know family safety and everything else um but i mean as far as for you personally you know with 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 everything that was going on like what was like some of the i guess some of the concerns that you had as far as just i mean again i just right now i'm just trying to get in your brain like you know like what would Maybe like what were you thinking? Wait, maybe some of the stuff that was going on in your head, like you know what, I mean, so many people need help. Like you know, how's it? How's this going to go down? Is my family going to be okay? Like again, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to make it as gray as possible to give you enough time and enough time and in, in, in room to kind of color it the way you want to. You can take gotcha. I mean, yeah. Okay. So besides being concerned with like, are they going to be like? Are they going to be okay? Right. Uh, that was my biggest concern. Right. Um, and definitely not anything like, I've never dealt with anything like that before. Right. I didn't know how to. Um, thankfully, I see a therapist and she was so helpful. Absolutely. I can't even begin to explain like how helpful she was. But um, I think one of the things that went through my mind quite a bit was uh, I haven't been back to visit much. Right. Um, I went back in 2000, 2009 and 2010. Right. Um, and I hadn't been back until last year. Right. So last summer I went back, I had an opportunity. It was very last minute. Um, I never had the chance to before um, simply because um, I started working at 14. Mm -hmm. um ironically my first job was mcdonald's that's the only that's the only place that can hire a 14 year old <laughs> so i was actually super stoked to have a job and like have money that yeah. i can spend you know but anyways so but it was also necessary like i had to work we had to work right. and uh jobs don't just give you time off right. and you know you fly for 20 hours at a time and then the time difference like you can't just go for a couple of days or even a week you're spending half that time in the air and adjusting to the time difference um so if you're gonna go like you're gonna go for as long as you possibly can yeah. and not only that but like tickets are expensive Whoa. so and it was just majority of my time here has been spent just trying to stay afloat so it was never like a financial luxury of mine to be able to go back and neither did I have uh the time or the resources to be able to right. and that's why I've only been back three times and so last year I was really lucky to be able to go back to you know um I was able to take a leave of absence with my job um and they allowed me to do that so I was able to visit for two weeks and I was actually in meat prep at the time and I had to make the decision like 
you know, like, do I want to wait or do I want to drop out of the me or what do I want to do? Um, because I had, I hadn't been back in 10 years. I didn't know what things were like there. I didn't know what kind of access to a gym I would even have. Um, that wasn't even, honestly, wasn't even my concern at the time. Like I kind of went in blindly thinking that I probably might not even be able to train while I was there. Um, so I might spend a couple of weeks of my meat prep, like not training, but that wasn't important to me. Like my family was more important. And I do remember like telling my coach that this is more important to me and I do care about my meat prep and I'm still going to stay in the meat. I'm just going to take whatever happens and I'll be fine with it because this is more important. This might be the last time that I see my family. And I think that's the thought that kept going through my mind is, was I right? Like, is it, was that really, was that truly the last time right like will I be able to ever see them again will I have the opportunity to even go back or not even the opportunity but will they be there Mm. so I think that just kind of you know like when I when I told him that that might be the last time and I might not have the opportunity again like obviously I didn't want to believe that that was really the case but I think the the war kind of made me question like maybe I don't know like maybe I won't have the opportunity like maybe I won't be able to or maybe that really was it. Damn, that's hard. Jeez, nice. I mean, not nice, but that's <laughs> fire. I'm gonna hear about that. Um, okay. So, wow, that's jeez. That's it. Kind of had a little lump in my throat. That's, that was. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna cry. I'm a cry baby, but I'm not gonna cry. Um, I mean, I still, I still wonder that because my, you know, my, my grandma. I don't have much family at all left, um, but majority of them are still in Ukraine. So, like, I have my uncle and my dad and my grandma, my my mom's mom. Um, my my dad's parents died before I was even born, but um so my my grandma is like in her 80s and my dad is also in his 80s so like aside from all of that it's just the whole age itself like right. you don't like I don't know what's gonna happen like my grandma my grandpa passed in his 60s a couple like two years after we moved here right so it like even aside from the war like I just didn't know if that opportunity would ever present itself again yeah, just the whole idea of just time in general. So like, yeah, so it was, I'm, I'm sure that trip was, you know, it was it was needed just as much as it was, as it was wanted. So yeah, I, I, I totally get that. Um, so, I mean, I guess, so, I mean, you're, you're again, and I, I don't make sure that, I mean, I, I, I point that out, of course, when, um, when I post this, uh, I mean, but like I said, I think, I think one of the cool things obviously about you is that, I mean, you do have so many layers clearly you're more than just a lifter and a coach, um, you know, um, but I think, I think people, I think t- people tend to forget that like your, your favorite lifters are still people, you know what I'm saying? So they, <laughs> they're not just like these machines, you know, for, you know, to move a lot of weight and, you know, for you to like, just like all their stuff or whatever. Um, you've amassed a, a, a pretty solid following um, just obviously from your work and, and just, just, you're a badass, you know, um, like, I guess, I don't know. I think that's been like the coolest thing um, because I've, you know, it's just weird. Like once you get to know a person um, and then people find out that you know them um, or like I, the, the one I get a lot is, oh, hey, you, you see at that gym that you're at, right? She changed at that gym that you're at. Goes, yeah, she's there sometimes she's at that gym sometimes. That's so weird. I, it is, but I mean, you know, like, like we talked about before, I think, you know, lifting is strength sports in general especially you know at this level it's it's one of those things where you literally can follow your hero you can meet your hero and if you're lucky enough you have an opportunity to train alongside your hero and if you're good enough you know assuming that your hero is like you know some some badass like yourself if you're good enough you might have an opportunity to literally compete on the same stage as your hero um so a lot of people you know they they look to find, you know, that, that commonality, that bridge between themselves and someone else. Um, me, I'll talk to anybody at any given point in time, just kind of whatever. 
Uh, so I mean, I feel like it was like, hey, here's my bridge to find out more about her. Um, yo, you trade in the same gym? Like, yes. No, she really that strong in real life. Yeah, yeah, man. She, she's really strong, dude. She's she's crazy strong. Yeah, dude, my girlfriend loves her, man. She wants to be like, well, you know what? You tell your girlfriend to train. You know, like, train <laughs> hard and you know what I mean? Like, is she looking for somebody to help with nutrition? You know, tell her to go to the website. You're like, I don't know. Like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to say? Um, I, I know that, I mean, in, in the past, we, we we actually kind of talked about that. Like, yeah, it just feels so weird when people like, you know, they, you know, it's weird to say idolize, but when people look up to you like that, especially like adults, um, what, <laughs> what's that feel like? I mean, because I mean, I know what it feels like for me, but I mean, like for, for you, like, what does that feel like when you do? Because I know you do. I know you get, I mean, tons of DMs. Um, I'm sure you get people to come up, ask for pictures, um, things like that. That's the weird. That's the weirdest part. I feel like, um, it's it's weird. Um, I don't, I don't. I honestly have no idea. I don't really know how to respond. Just mostly because I don't think. And I hope this doesn't come off in the wrong way, but like, I can't really relate. Like I've never felt that way about somebody else before, um, like in the lifting community or anything like that. Because that's why? Because you told me that I was your hero, and now you're saying that, I? that's what we're doing now. All right, babe. Continue. <laughs> Continue. Continue. Um, I mean, obviously, there are people out there that I think are great, or like they're doing great things, or I appreciate their lifting and enjoy watching them lift, or. Um, pay attention to the information that I put out and stuff like that. But them as a person, as a whole, I've never been like, oh my God, I can't believe it's such and such. Like, let me go talk to them or like um, get a picture with them or something like that. Because at the end of the day, like, I think I've always kind of known that we're all just people, right? you know, we're all just people and we're all doing something. We're all doing something special. Absolutely. It's just the exposure that we each receive. And I just happen to get a little bit more than somebody else. Um, but I don't feel like I'm anything special. You know what I mean? I feel you. I feel you. I definitely feel you. But here's a question then. Is there somebody, they don't have to be a lifter. Is there somebody you're like, oh shit, it's whoever fill in the blank i gotta get a picture with them is there no one that you can think of You're like oh my god it's whoever i gotta get a picture oh my god yeah. i mean like nobody comes to mind honestly all right jeez i don't you're hey, listen. You're built different, dog. So tell you right. I now. don't know. I'm not like a. I'm also very introverted. Oh, so I'll like, cry. so like, a lot of people think I'm mean or I don't like them or like I'm mad or something. Like that's not true. I just I have like the RBF and I'm very introverted. So like, someone has to bring out the social part of me or yeah. else like it just kind of stays with me like I'm not <laughs> I'm not mean by any means you know no. I'm just not you're reserved you keep it to yourself and which is yeah and I'm also yeah. like a pretty private person yeah. uh, that's why you don't see me like posting I'm not like super open on Instagram which sorry I don't I don't know <laughs> sorry it is what it is I mean you know like I think everyone Everyone is entitled to feel it. I think what it is, it's such a break from the norm that you see with social media, with people right now that that do get a lot of exposure is, you know, where some people, and again, it's no disrespect intended for anybody listening. Some people crave the spotlight. Some people want the spotlight. And where others is like, all right, cool, it's on me, but it's not something that I crave. It's not something that I'm like, oh, I got to have this attention. Um and, and, and maybe you're like that. Maybe you're like, you know what? I, I mean, I recognize that I get this attention. I recognize that I do get a little bit of a spotlight, but it's not something that I'm like waking up looking for. Um, and I mean, I, I mean, that can be respected. I mean, I, I think that there's something to be said about a person that that is successful, that does do well, that likes to work hard, that likes to, you know, put their best foot forward. 
but at the end of the day, they're like, all right, cool. Now that that's done, let me just continue life. Like, I don't need to, you know, be the spotlight of everyone's attention at all times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I can respect that. I mean, personally, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it feels cool that people like, you know, I mean, I don't know. I just always like, I don't know. I think part of me just like, it's just, it just feels dope that like someone like just likes you enough and like, hey man, can I get a picture? I was just, I don't know that I used to get, I personally, I used to get weirded out about it. I'm like, why bro? Like, it's just me. Like for real though, I just literally spilled milk in my lap. But you want I mean, yeah, that's, that's currently me, but you're also right. Like it is incredibly flattering and yeah. it makes me kind of think like, Hmm, maybe there is something, but at the same time, like I'm, I am pretty private. So yeah. anything that people know about me is what I choose to put out on Instagram, that which part. is not very much. Yeah. So it's my lifting. Like I've always kind of kept it as like a log and yeah. especially as of late when I switched to the iPhone and like my storage is limited, like I'll post my lifting and then I have to delete it off my phone. Cause I don't, yeah. you know, don't have the space. So it's kind of like my log and it's kind of what it's just turned into um the attention that it gets or whatever it's yeah. not it was never pursued or anything like that but no certainly if you so it's flattering but at the same yeah. time like i also i am fully aware that like whatever people look up to is on a superficial level yeah i mean like they look, they look up to what i'm all of they what they're allowed to see you know what i mean so i try to i mean i I say all the time, like, I feel like IG, social media in general, um, I feel, I view my life as like a house and, you know, there's only so much I want people to see inside my house. Like I'll, I'll open the blinds up. You can look inside and see, you know, oh, he's on a nice couch. That's nice. But I'm never going to open up my door full and let you walk in. Just, it's just not the type of person I am. Um, you know, and, and I guess people, I mean, it's, I think it, it is dope and it is flattering that people like, you know, look up to, to, to others in, in a way, but it's never really something that, I, that, that I'm in pursuit of, like, oh, let me get this attention. And, and certainly I don't feel like you're that way either. I don't think it's like, oh, let me have this attention from you. Um, but I, 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 I know from, at least from the outside looking in, like certainly um, you're, you're very, very calculated and smart with how you use your social media, which is, it's honestly, it's, it's really, it's, it's actually really like admirable to see like how you how you manage it um because honestly if 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 you were the type like hey you know what let me get this attention let me get these likes let me get these followers you could easily be a 100 200k easy easy because people are obsessed with you that's for sure um but i think i think that, <laughs> see i don't even know how to, i don't even know how to react to that I mean, it's not, I mean, it's just, it's facts, it's facts. That's I mean, just it's, so weird to hear. I don't know. Weird. It is, but at the same time, it's like, it's one of those things where like, all right, you know, I mean, the type of person you are and, you know, even with, you know, the personality that, that, that you give off, it's like, all right, cool. You know what? I'd like to get to know who this person is, or I, I wonder like how cool she is in real life and stuff like that. I mean, and then of course, you know, you have like really cool friends and all that stuff. And it's like, you just have the greatest time and like people are like, yo, I want to be a part of that. It'd be cool to have a friend like that. It would be cool to have a girl like that. It'd be cool to hang out with people like that. Like, I mean, a lot of like, it would be cool. You know what I mean? So you invoke a lot of that. Hey man, it would be cool to hang out with a chick like that. Um, So people like that, you know, like people, you know, people, <laughs> God, this sucks. I'm, I swear I'm not shitting on people. I swear y'all. But I feel like people, <laughs> people want to be around people that make their lives better. People go to IG, you know, to escape their own lives a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, what's better, what's what's a better way to escape than like, hey, you know what, let me go to this, like this badass Ukrainian girl's, you know, IG, like, dude, look how dope she is. Yo, look how much she lifts. Look how pretty she is. Look, she's shredded. Yo, her friends are dope. Yo, she's dope. Let, you know, like, it's easy. It's easy to like to, not necessarily fall into a trap, but it's easy like to go down a rabbit hole, like, you know what? I would like to hang out with a person like that because they seem like they're really fun to be around, you know? Um, but then those same people, they'll see in real life, like, yo, I don't think I can say anything to her. I don't think she, she want to talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, the, the way you, the way you've managed to, to cultivate your following and really give people an opportunity to see the parts of, of the parts of, of you in your life that you want them to see the way you've done it is such a, it's a, such a smart calculated way of doing it 
that you you can just live your life any way you want to live it and not necessarily have to worry about you know dealing with like weirdos and and, and you know judgmental people and, and people just want like just I always want a piece of you at all times. Like, I mean, I think you've done it in such a, a, a smart way. Oh, no, that still happens. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're going to get those outliers. <laughs> Woo! You're going to get those outliers. But the, the, but I've noticed, like, I mean, you you live, a, you, live a, you live you live your life freely. You know what I mean? And you, you know, you operate the way you want to operate. And you're unapologetic. You do your thing. And it's that I think is like, I think that's one of my favorite parts about having you as a friend, because for me, I'm one of those people like, all right, man, I got to make sure this move that I do is is smart because I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to mess this up. I want to make sure this is right, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? And I don't know if, if I could do it the right way. I, I'm i really big on examples. Like, all right, how do I, I need an example of how to do it the right way without like messing up. And then, you know, when I started like, I guess, not necessarily following you, but like when we became friends, like and I started watching how you kind of move and operate. I'm like, yo, she really just, it's so smart the way she does it. Yo, I need to like, you know what I mean? So like part, obviously that's, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to get you on this, this podcast because I feel like, you know, I mean, you can be friends with a person, but you can also be fans of a person that you're friends with, you know? Um, you can know a person, but still want to know what their story is, you know? So that's really what I, I do my podcast for. I mean, I mean, I just have, you know, I feel like people want to know people's stories, but they're afraid to ask. So I'm like, you know what? I want to know your story because I'm nosy, but I also want <laughs> to know your story because I feel like there's a lot of good people out there, but I feel like a lot of the same people get get their stories told. A lot of the same people, you know, they, they get their names out there. A lot of the same people, like, we know the story over and over and over, but there's some like yourself that have an amazing story, have an amazing background, that have like such a textured experience of life that it, like, I mean, you're literally a citizen of the world in so many ways, and people would never know that because it's not like you're going to go and tell them. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. You know what I mean? And, you know, like, people are on the, like, you know, because before I didn't even know, like, I didn't even know that you were a sweet person. I had no clue, no clue. And you were like, I get that. I get that a lot, believe it or not. Yeah, and you're one of the nicest <laughs> people ever. Like, literally, one of the nicest, nicest people ever. So I think, you know, well, thank you listen don't thank me you know it's all you i'm just literally i'm just literally <laughs> reporting what i you know but i mean but i think that's been one of the coolest things i mean because honestly i think i was the biggest i don't know why but i was such a nervous wreck um for that corpus meet because i just wanted to do well and then like but then i'm just like well i don't know i don't know if people understand how much it's not pressure it's just it's lifting but i mean I don't know that, that people like, you know, sometimes understand like, you know, it's just, you know, the pressure one puts on themselves to do well, you know, it's, you know, it, it's always, you know, it, you can fold under it or you can thrive under it, one of the two, but like, I mean, I'm always, like, I want to do well, but then my, you know, I guess my, my comfort zone is being around people that I identify with and being able to have conversations with people and just being able to have a good time. And us going out and sushi and hanging out with everybody and just kicking it like that literally put me at such a just chill like disposition i was like oh let's go do this meet literally i got in my truck i was like all right i'm ready to do this meet now because I, I was able to laugh crack jokes or whatever um and honestly i i can honestly tell you straight up i was like i want her to be my friend straight up so Aww. yeah i mean so i i you know I, I feel like anytime there's anybody that I, I feel like is in my circle of friends, like I want people to know about them and, you know, rather than me, like, hey, man, you know, about that girl she's like, you know, I just know my podcast. We can talk about it. Um, <laughs> so again, I, you know, I appreciate that. Um, so I got a few more questions and I'll get out of your hair. Um, I kind of, okay. um, I had to brag to you about you to your face. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have a meet coming up. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about the meet you have coming up, please, and thank you. Uh, it is September 24th. It's the oh. USBA Pro Raw. Um, it, I think most people know it yep. by the name of the showdown. Yep. Ooh, um, the, that's a star-studded. So that's the, that's the company we're in. We're in, like, I mean, that's how we know you're an official badass. Because not just everybody's in that meet. It's the who's who. I mean, 
you know, it's the who's I get. <laughs> I, I guess I don't know I never I didn't I definitely didn't start powerlifting thinking or even having a goal of getting to this point honestly I just kind of wanted to lift and see what I could do and I'm here now and that's yeah it's, it's kind of weird and you're thriving so I mean don't don't get it twisted you're killing it so that's gonna be wow man that's gonna be, I might try to go to that I don't know. I'm excited, but I'm, I'm definitely, I, I would be lying if I said I was not very nervous and it's not because of the meat that it is, but just, it has been a very um interesting year. So I don't know what's going to happen, um, but I'm here for it. I mean, you're looking strong, so that's promising. Well, time will tell. We'll know in like seven weeks. <laughs> You're the worst. That just yes, just, yes. I'm gonna have some. Um, and then of course, um, this is definitely something that that um, you know, I want to kind of loop back to um, when you were just talking about your fitness journey and how you know, like how you got started, like kind of like everyone else. Um, you know, you don't really, you don't really know. You just go in and you know, with the, you just want, you know, people just you want to do something. You, you don't want to get better. You want to get in better shape. You don't know how, but you just know that you need to do something. Um, I guess, what would you say? Oh, yeah. What's something that you would say to somebody like, you know, I mean, because I do have a lot of listeners, lifters, list, listeners out there that aren't, they're not power lifters. You know, they're not even really in the fitness industry. They're just like listening to the podcast. Um, but somebody that's been thinking about like, you know, starting their fitness journey or, you know, starting to lift or, you know, maybe working on their diet, you know, um, rather than, you know, just on the week January one or something like that. They was like, you know, I need to make some changes. Uh, what would be something that, what would be some advice that you would give them? I think first of all, everyone starts somewhere. So you don't have to already be at a certain point. That's unrealistic. Like I didn't, like I said, when I first started, literally just walked around from machine to machine, not even understanding like what I was doing in the order that they were set up in. Um, but I like, was I nervous? Yes. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you get doing it. Um, another thing is I wish that I would have found a reputable trainer or coach who knew what they are doing mm. not like not like your typical gold's gym personal trainer not um you know your commercial gym personal trainer um it doesn't take very much to become a personal trainer and i personally think that most of them don't really understand what they're doing um so to find someone worthwhile who knows what they're doing is going to be very important because you want to learn these movements like whatever it is that you're doing you're going to learn the basics right so you're going to learn those basics you want to learn them the right way to start with because it's easier to do it right in the beginning than it is to later go back and fix yep. or habits so i i made that mistake and it took me a very long time to break bad habits that i learned in the beginning because i listened to the bro in the gym or you know at the time it was my boyfriend um like it's like find someone who knows what they're doing and they're also going to be able to make you feel more comfortable right in doing what you want to do and kind of pave the way for you too so maybe even like jesus sorry my dog's always breaking something <laughs> um but yeah like don't be afraid and find someone who knows what they're doing they can show you the way Ooh, I love it. I love it. All right. We are down to our final question. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> okay. You thought about it. Maybe, maybe not. So final question is this. Everyone knows I was asked the same question over and over and over, and over every podcast. This is season five, so you know what's going to happen. So everyone knows about Mount Rushmore, how you have four presidents or whatever and all that good stuff, your top four. So if you were to make your own personal Mount Rushmore, who would you have on it and why? It can be in any particular order. It doesn't have to be lifters. It could be anyone. 
any way, any point in history, any time in the future, don't care. It's all you. And go. Okay, well, I guess I didn't have much time to think about it, so I only have what? one person. You had a book? What? Yeah, you were asking me so many questions. I was thinking about the answers to those questions. Okay. But I do have I do have one. May not be able to fill the whole thing. All right. But I do have one. Um, and it might be like a pretty typical expected answer of it being a family member, my mom, of course. Um, and the reason being is she came everything that she's done she's done for her kids for me and my sister right. her entire life has revolved around creating the best life for me and her um with you know very little regard to herself and everything all of her decisions revolved around us and that's why we're here uh right. that's why she brought us here uh that's why i am where i am but why my sister is where she is like she created those opportunities for us and um i don't i'm not really sure if i've even told anybody this maybe like one or two people but when my mom came here she was still um battling breast cancer so she finished her treatment here like nobody knew she brought them she brought the medicine with her um and she kind of did it behind closed doors and nobody even knew and um we the the man that she married was he kind of just wanted for lack of a better word like not even a housewife but like a slave like he didn't want to help us he didn't want us to have a life of our own he just wanted my mom to like do whatever he wanted her to do you know what i mean and they ultimately like ultimately like they separated but my mom had to do everything um to get us to stay there and to be able to stay in the states and live um so she did what she had to do and she worked as a housekeeper for minimum wage for the first several years and it's not because she didn't have any degrees but she she had two bachelor degrees um she was a civil engineer in ukraine and also she had a degree in uh interpersonal communication but none of those degrees transferred here so she had to go back to school and she had to put herself back through school with two kids and she did all of that for us shout out mom she um, even to this day like we're grown ass adults you know i'm 32 my sister's five years older but her life still literally revolves around us that's, and that's awesome like like to just imagine you know to be so selfless that's absolute selflessness wow you are yeah your mom's built different tag man yeah, I don't think there's no one else that belongs in that rush more. Sheesh. So she's definitely my hero. Like, no matter what I go through, like, if my mom could do all of those things and make it and still be here today, like, I can fucking, I can, I can put up with anything. Like, I Absolutely. can handle anything. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to lie, dude. This was this is a treat this is a great <laughs> treat I, I was i i had i had zero on my notepad i had zero notes i was like i'm just gonna roll with it i'm gonna see where we go you know what i mean like i didn't want you to like you know, i didn't want you to to feel like you like pressure to have an answer like a bunch of different questions and stuff so i just asked as we went and i am not gonna lie i am so glad that not only myself but everyone that's gonna be listening they're gonna hear your story yo this it's a badass story it's for sure um like super super high key ending it talking about your mom like look I, you almost you almost got me you almost got me twice in this thing Ooh, i'm i'm a cry baby though I'm, I'm super emotional like you almost got me twice so i was like oh i had to start like drawing over here on the notepads to keep it like <laughs> oh man you almost got me i was like all right it's over thanks guys um but yeah thank you so <laughs> much um for those of uh, for those of them out there that want to find you, uh, how do they reach you? I- IG, of course. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah, it's 
my name, but with an extra I because my name was somehow weirdly enough taken. Sorry. So just FYI to everyone out there, my name only has one I in it, <laughs> but not on Instagram because I had to. Yeah, but I appreciate it very, very much. Um, yeah, I, I'll shut up, man, and I'll let you go. Um, but yeah, first of all, good luck. Um, thank you, thank you. Because uh, that's gonna be fun. Hopefully, I can figure out a way to get there. Because I, dude, I all my favorite people are gonna be freaking going in, and I'm gonna be stuck here. I'm like, oh, someone's gonna be sitting here, uh, probably watching on a live stream. Um, but yeah, um, good luck with training, and I'm sure I'll see you soon. Thank you again. We will talk to you soon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was Absolutely. fun. Bye. <laughs> Bye.